On this day, the 1st of November, 1755, the Great Lisbon Earthquake took place. This was one of the worst earthquakes in all of recorded history, and for the time was one of had the lar one of the largest casualties of any natural disaster then recorded. It was also the first earthquake that was scientifically recorded and studied. The earthquake itself took place on the Feast of All Saints. Lisbon, a large port city, capital of the Kingdom of Portugal, had a population somewhere around 200,000 people, maybe more, probably more, people coming in and out and going and coming. 200,000 people, maybe more, 250,000 let's say. That was an enormous population for the day, a mega city for that type of place. Lisbon, being the capital of one of the great empires of the West, would have had much uh, trade going through it, would have, uh, the port would have been full, the cities would have, been, and would have been full, and because it was a holy day, it, there was a lot of uh, ceremonies going on. Churches were full, the candles were uh, lit and put in the windows of everyone's house. So you can imagine a city with narrow streets full of people from all around the world. A holy day, people out celebrating in the churches, in the squares, lighting candles, and then an earthquake hits. There's going to be trouble. The royal family, uh, the king and the, his entourage, had left the city earlier on in the day as one of the princesses had wanted to leave Lisbon for the holy day. She had wanted to go out to the countryside. So the government, the royal family, and the prime minister, the Marquis de Pombal, survived the great earthquake and were there to pick up the pieces afterwards. One of the great tragedies, besides all the lives that were lost, was all of the great treasures that were within Lisbon. Lisbon had some of the greatest libraries in the world. They had a 70,000 volume royal library, hundreds of works of art, paintings by Titian, Rubens, Correggio, uh, royal archives disappeared with detailed historical records of the explorations of Vasco da Gama and other navigators. Royal palaces were destroyed. Um, there was another library with 18,000 books. There's churches destroyed, the cathedral, uh, the royal hospital, and it was unbelievable how much treasure, how much incredible stuff was lost. And then, somewhere between 30 to 40,000 people were killed in the earthquake, or, or swept away in the tsunami, or burned alive in the firestorm that burned through Lisbon after the waves had retreated. It was an unmitigated disaster for Portugal. Their greatest city was destroyed. Not only Lisbon, but many other smaller cities, especially in the Algarve and up the coast, were either completely destroyed or severely damaged. There was a one city where luckily they had a wall surrounding it, but the waves came right up to the top of the wall before they receded. They must have felt lucky to have that wall at that point. Some villages and uh, fishing villages completely disappeared or swept away. The tsunami was somewhere in the re uh, about 60 feet high, about 100 feet when it came into Lisbon itself, up the Tagus. 
Now, it also hit Cornwall and the west coast of Ireland. It hit Galway and Kinsale. And at this, here it was somewhere in the region of about 20 to 30 feet high, which is quite high when it hits the coast. It also hit the French territories of Mortinique and Guadeloupe and Brazil, a Portuguese territory across the sea. So it was a serious tsunami, a complete disaster. And it is said that this is what began the decline and eventual end of the Portuguese Empire. This disaster was so disastrous that it cost Portugal about 30 to 40 percent of its GDP. Then they had to rebuild Lisbon. Marquis de Pombal, if you've ever been to Lisbon, his name is all over the city because he was the one who chose the designs for the new city of Lisbon which is a grid pattern in the middle of a medieval city. Lisbon itself is still very beautiful. They've rebuilt it, obviously. But the very center is a grid. And then around it is the old medieval uh, town that was probably destroyed at the time, but it was just rebuilt by people building on the, the, high, land, the high ground and the hills. Whereas the flat land in the middle, that was reserved for the government, and they made that grid pattern that you see there now. The Marquis de Pombal was instrumental in rebuilding. He was the Prime Minister of Portugal for quite a long time, quite a powerful and very interesting man in his own right. However, it was the cost, the human and the monetary cost of this disaster which meant that Portugal no longer had the men or the money to send troops or ships or colonists around the world to settle and conquer territories. And it's a pity because Portugal was right there, right about to go. And then this happened. And they kind of slid back into uh, insignificance which is a pity because 200 years before they had been in the forefront of the exploration of the world. They'd been fighting the South China Sea, conquering territories in India, settling the Americas, fighting the Dutch and the Spanish. It was all very exciting. And now they're going to be condemned to become second rate. So, on this day, 1st of November, 1755, the Great Earthquake of Lisbon takes place, killing up to 40,000 people, destroying some of the greatest treasures in the West, and ending the Portuguese Empire. If you like these videos, come back tomorrow for more. Subscribe, like, leave a comment.